Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to MATC Now, coming to you live from the downtown campus in the Milwaukee PBS studios. Today, we're going to be talking about the Environmental Health Program and sitting down with Kathy Bates and other guests coming into our studio this afternoon. All that and much more coming up on MATC Now. Welcome back everyone. As usual, we have a very special guest co-host with us today. I would like to introduce Dr. Wilma Bonaparte. Dr. Bonaparte, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do here at MATC. Oh, thank you, Luis. Um, well, here at MATC, I am um, uh, responsible for the Mekon campus and meet the needs of the Osaki County uh, along with Dermatown, making sure that the needs of the manufacturing, the business, and the community along with the students are very well met. So I am an extension of the president of the MATC, so I work very hard of course. Uh, to make sure that all those needs are met. And what do you love most about your job? Um, basically dealing with the faculty, with the students, uh, with the community, uh, making sure that their dreams, the student needs, um, and the student needs are realized, and um, the faculty and the manufacturing have a strong no. pipeline um, and Tommy, basically, um, everything is uh, get done. All right, and that brings us to our first segment where Tara Jefferson gives us a tour with the African Spanish culture. There is no doubt that African influence is prominent in many cultures throughout the world. Every year, the MATC Spanish classes learn about the African influence in Latin culture through lessons of drumming and dance. Most of the Latin culture was directly influenced by African people in dance, music, the arts, literature, and much more. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the easiest way from West Africa was to Brazil, and in turn, much of the Brazilian culture was influenced by Africans that migrated there or were brought there as slaves. But that was just where the influence started. Today, the African influence is found in several other Latin countries and is extremely prominent throughout the Caribbean. MATC Spanish instructor Pablo coached the Spanish students through Latin dances such as the merengue, salsa, and tango. <laughs> and through drumming sessions using the congo and a Peruvian box drum. It's important for students to research the African influence on Spanish culture to get an authentic background of the language and culture they're studying. For MATC Now, this is Tara Jefferson, signing off. Awesome, some great insight there, wouldn't you think, Dr. Bonaparte? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean. It's interesting to see uh, this, uh, the, the influence of the African-American, the African culture in the Latino culture, because I am from Puerto Rico. Right. So you cannot ask how much African influence we have in my culture starting with the dance and uh, coincident enough with the food as well. Right. So this is a perfect segment uh, for me to comment about it. It's <laughs> right. great. Definitely. Of course, you know, great. growing up, I'm Salvadorian, as we were speaking before. And um, yeah, my parents always taught me about that, how like Africa had a very big impact mm -hmm. on how, you know, a lot of the culture works now, especially with like, I guess, arts and entertainment, we could say, you know, mm -hmm. with, like dances and things like that. So yeah. Next up in our program of the week, we will take a look at the environmental health program up at the North Campus with Dan Fisher. Take a look. Mm -hmm. 
MATC has a new venture underway in support of its overall mission of transforming lives from the classrooms to the meal plan it offers to the students. MATC progressively strives to meet the needs of its student body. The campus meal plan is a new option this year that students have the ability to purchase a block of 25 meals for $150. They are redeemable at the uh, food court at the downtown campus or uh, the Stormer Cafes at any of the regional campuses. Convenient dining between all campuses is accommodating to participating students. There are different options available. We have two options. One will allow you to get like our plated meal or luncheon meal of the day with a beverage. The other could give you a like a turkey sandwich with two sides and you can select the two sides. Um, and the, there are signs posted throughout the various cafeterias that give you the options uh, so to help you select it and put the meal plan together. If you plan your meals correctly, you can probably get between a seven and eight dollar purchase for what you paid six dollars for, for the price of the meal. And this is also uh, tax free, so you do not have to pay tax on this meal plan. So that upfront is a savings in and of itself. If you purchase more than what's allowed for that meal, you can pay the difference in um, cash or with your credit debit card. If interested in participating in the campus meal plan, the first step is you can purchase it through any of the campus cashier's offices or through the bookstore. And then from there it goes to student accounts where they make sure that you will be able to see it on your bill, uh, the purchase of the campus meal plan. And then it's transferred, the information is then transferred to your Stormer card. And once it's on your Stormer card, it's open for use. As the meal plan progresses, more students are taking advantage of its perks. It has received a substantial amount of feedback. For the first semester, we felt very good. We had a, about 180 meals, meal blocks purchased for this semester. We're taking all the feedback and we're going back and we've added menu items based on the suggestions of the students and we're continuing to review uh, the meal plan to make it most beneficial for the students. MATC is putting in the effort necessary to support the needs of its students. With continuous improvement, campus dining can become more affordable and accommodating. For MATC Now, this is Nick Harvey. exactly because of our diversity that MATC is such an exciting, stimulating, and successful college. You are a member of the MATC family, and we are committed to your success. We will work with you to ensure that MATC is a safe and stimulating place that values you as a person, as a student, and as a citizen in our democracy. We remain firm in our commitment to supporting and defending all members of the MAC, MATC community and adhering to MATC's and Local 212's values of diversity, inclusion, tolerance, and integrity. Thank you very much. Uh, the purpose of these unity gatherings is to respond to the divisive and scapegoating language that was pervasive in the presidential election. Mexicans were called rapists, women were insulted and attacked, African Americans were demonized, Muslims and Syrians were demonized. Our members felt that that language was un-American, it was divisive, and it was contrary to the values of this country. We do not stand for those. We stand for inclusion. We stand for tolerance. We stand for diversity. In fact, we think that those values, which are MATC's values, are the things that make America great. And so we're holding these gatherings to assure our students that MATC 
will be a warm, safe, and welcoming place that it values diversity, tolerance, and inclusion, and that we will do everything in our power to assist our students in both their academic success and in ensuring that they are safe in their pursuit of their studies and when they're at MATC and outside MATC. Very well put. Now for our interview segment, we have Kathy Bates and Patricia Quinn this afternoon. Thank you both for joining us and uh, t speaking with us today about the environmental, uh, the environmental health program. Um, so tell us a little bit, you know, about the program. We've seen a lot, and uh, two years ago we had a package uh, regarding the program. And so how has that changed since? How has the program expanded since it uh, first started? Okay, well, first, thank you for having us here yeah, this afternoon. thank you. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I'd really like to say is that our program really evolved. We first started in 1968, and that's when the health departments and the water utilities came to MATC seeking them out as a leader and needing uh, people with higher skill sets. So at that point is when they created the program. Uh, it was two programs, but then in the 80s they realized that the skills that are offered through both programs overlap one another. So then they combined the program. And then we have gone through a program named Change or two. And it's environmental health and water quality technology. We're still, as far as the training, certainly it's meeting the current needs and, and updates with the technology and everything like that. And as far as the jobs out there, water treatment operators, food inspectors, health and safety, uh, field monitoring and sampling. Um, it just, you know, we're growing and as we know the importance back in the late 60s, early 70s, the importance of water, we're still experiencing that now with we, what we have, the Global Water Center, the Water Council, and other types of research and development to bring manufacturing jobs back, as well as new technologies that are gonna improve our water quality so we all have uh, suitable water for drinking. and. Right. Uh, like and certainly it's a, it's a growing major in many universities now with the whole you know, climate change epidemic and everything. Um, sustainability environment, from what I've noticed, is gradually growing. Patricia, mm -hmm. you went through the program here or you are currently I going? I am currently yes, in the program currently. now. I've never been happier in school as a student. You know, I've, I'm so excited being in with Kathy and then there's another, um, our other main instructor, his name is Jerry. They're just a wealth of knowledge and uh, wisdom and everything that we learn, we use in your job. And I'm always writing down, but you know, when Kathy will make a note, know this, <laughs> you're going to need to know this, you know, for your actual, you know, when you get out into the field, right. we're hands on from day one. My first week in uh, environmental biology, I was in a river. Saning, it's, it's called saning, so it's like right. you take the big net, you, you, know, you go up and you collect uh, <laughs> samples of fish and other little critters and um, you know, little invertebrates. And, and I just couldn't believe, this is what I get to do. <laughs> yeah. This is school? This is a For job, sure. potentially? That's what I notice a lot here yeah. at MATC. A lot of the programs here are very hands-on, and so how does the relationship, obviously you sound like you have you enjoy the relationship with your professors and I things do. like that. How does that really impact students, like other students? You know, um, we're very close. Actually, we all know each other by name. Everyone in the program, we know each other's lives, and um, we're always extending a hand, helping. Uh, but there are leaders, and everything's all, all connected. If you ever have a question, you don't have to be shy. You can talk to them about other things too and typically you know we're always bringing things to the table um, in the news or current events going on with um, water technology or environmental health and get to discuss that in class too it's just awesome right and so I see a lot of uh, a lot of things happening around MATC especially with the M3 initiative and new ways of being able to link other universities around the city of Milwaukee uh, with majors, do you guys work? Because I know UWM has the freshwater sciences mm -hmm. program, and mm -hmm. so do you guys ever like you know correlate? Or are you guys starting to collab at all a little bit? Different um, things. There's start of that. Yes, uh, we do have articulation agreements with other universities and colleges, uh, but there is um, 
that connection there definitely. Uh, a handful of my students have already gone on, earned their bachelor's degree, and they're pursuing their master's at the UWM School of Freshwater Science. Mm -hmm. Then there's also some volunteer opportunities, and we get that nice yeah. intermingling there um, at those events as well. So yes, there looks like great opportunities for collaboration down the road. All right, and what's the what's your any advice for students coming into the program? For in, you know anything that they need to know, any okay. advice coming in? Well, I think they first have to have a, a care for the environment, um, a, a care for people, of course, too, and their health, um, and the willingness to learn and mm -hmm. to learn a lot of different things and being able to apply that. Um, I too am a graduate of the program and my thought was it's like I get to do something that's going to affect the future generations. What a better gift than that to be able to be you know some type of inspiration for future generations or making sure our environment and our water and that can be sustainable for future generations. All right. well perfect well thank you so much both of you for joining us and talking about your experiences in uh, the program and you know just being able to share us with your thoughts and everything. Yeah, thanks so, for right. having us. Of course. Thank you. And now Sierra Hernitz will give us an inside look at the Unity, Tolerance, and Inclusion Gathering that was held last Wednesday here at the downtown campus. Take it away. The environmental health field protects the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, whether at home, work, or play. It's urgently needed that people's health be protected as well as protecting those those uh, areas. The courses I teach are very water related. We get a lot of hands-on experience, both lab work, um, analyzing things, collecting samples, giving case studies and coming up with a plan of actions, how to take what corrective measures as well as preventative measures. In this program, uh, we do both uh, biology and chemistry. It's very uh, comprehensive. There's a lot of different things that we work with. NTC has really good uh, instruments that we actually have to take out and um, test quite a bit to get us prepared. They're always showing us what's new, what's hot, what's going to be the next upcoming thing. That's what we pride ourselves on, the hands-on kinds of things. Uh, for example, we go on numerous field trips. We can actually see the processes and that going on in industry and what they do to help to treat the water. Our instructors take us all over the place. It's just interesting to see how each person you know, takes care of water. It, it's a dual kind of benefit. Students get the benefit of, of doing this thing. And secondly, and just as important, we'd like to be involved with giving back to the community. A lot of students come to us because they do have an understanding and a care for the environment and they want to do something to give back or do something to protect for the, our environment for the future generations. It's always, it's always something that's interests me because it's something you can, uh, you can get a job in the field and really feel like you're, you're doing a benefit to people around you. You sleep easy at night if, if you're doing good work. The environmental ethic is out there. Yeah, Getting into this field now. is something that is is uh, extremely is meaningful. People can get very passionate about something like this. Yeah, I leave school every day kind of feeling really good. I got a job um, with the city of Grafton and I don't think I could have done it without my teacher, Kathy Bates. In the environmental field, uh, there, there's so many different opportunities, there's so many different job descriptions or titles. The career outlook is extremely favorable. Uh, employers have sought us out to uh, see what can be done to increase the number of students entering this field and available for uh, employment. There's plenty of things you can do. Me personally, I'm not sure what I want to do just yet, but I, at least I have a lot of options after I'm done with this program. All you take is an open ear. Next up, Luis have the MATC Minute. Luis? Thank you, Dr. Bonaparte. We have a lot coming up here at MATC. <laughs> Starting with our first event coming up, Wednesday at noon, the next part of the Quadrant Series, Establishing Financial Comfort, will be held in room M612 at the downtown campus. Then Thursday at 6 p.m., the downtown campus's Cooley Auditorium will host the Academic Honors Recognition Ceremony, celebrating MATC's best and brightest di diploma students. Also at the downtown campus this Saturday, 
is our annual Breakfast with Santa event. This event will be held in room S315 from 9 a.m. to noon, but the buffet will close at 10.30 a.m. Admission is $3 for kids and $5 for ages 15 and up. Finally, don't forget to register for spring semester classes before winter break. The best classes fill up fast. That's all for the MATC Minute. Back to you, Dr. Bonaparte. Thank you, Luis. Healthcare is a serious issue that affects us all. Kathleen Hall shed some light on the subject. Hello, I'm Kathleen Hole from MATC's Communications and Events Department. MATC is participating in the White House Healthy Campus Challenge, an initiative to reach MATC students who do not currently have health insurance. The health insurance marketplace is designed for people who do not have health insurance through a job, Medicare, Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, or another source of qualifying coverage. It is important to note that if you have not enrolled in qualifying health insurance by January 31st, 2017, you may have to pay a penalty. You can apply for health insurance coverage in four ways, online at healthcare.gov, by telephone, with in-person help, or by a paper application. Marketplace plans can change each year so even if you are happy with your current plan and you don't have any major life changes to report, you should still review the available plans. You might benefit from a change and you won't know until you compare what's available. If you enroll by Wednesday, December 15th, your health insurance coverage will begin January 1st, 2017. For more information, please visit healthcare.gov. Come on, MATC, get covered. It's great when people can set aside time to pass down such important information and going off of that package, um, you know, we see a lot of issues these days with healthcare and so how does, do you know how MATC, you know, what's like the benefit of going to MATC in order to get the right career path for these benefits? You know? Well, it's very important because uh, in today's world and probably you as a young person um, <laughs> have experienced or may not have experienced this, but uh, a visit to any kind of um, medical center cut a lot of money. So getting enrolled in a, in a medical insurance um, is, uh, is worthwhile effort. Uh, not for today, but tomorrow you need it um, is... Um, is, uh, is a benefit that money um, doesn't pay. So it's, um, it's very important. I encourage everybody. Um, so it take a, a, little, a little time now, but it pay for tomorrow. So I am all the way in with Kathleen Hall. Please uh, enroll for you, for your family. Um, so take the time and follow the procedures, definitely. All right, well that sounds great. And so going back to you a little bit before we, uh, before we end the show here, tell us a little bit more uh, about you. And so how long exactly, once again, have you been here at MATC? <laughs> um, around 25 years. Wow. Yep, I started very young and I have done it all. I have taught at MATC, I have worked with students, financial aid, advising, counseling, I have uh, been an associate dean. I have worked in all the campuses, in all the divisions, in all the school. Um, so basically, I have been a dean. So I hope that uh, being a vice president will be my last stop. So, and <laughs> needed to say, I believe in the vision and mission of community colleges. And I strongly believe in transforming life of the students. So, um, uh, MATC had me at hello. Right, and so students definitely, definitely appreciate um, hearing that message that you always have to send yep. to students. So I want to thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and everything. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. And so, thank you so much for the invitation. I wish you luck um, to you and to the crew. <laughs> and uh, certainly, students uh, have a very soft spot in in my heart. 
and um, have a bright future and um, have a, high, a nice holidays. Of course. Well, thank you so much. And that wraps up uh, things for today's show. Don't forget to join us next week for the season finale of MATC Now on Monday the 12th at 3.30 p.m. Once again, I'm Luis DeLeon. Thank you all for watching and see you next week.